Well, hey guys, I'm a board certified dermatologist and in this video, we're gonna be talking about the skin benefits of taking a probiotic. Probiotics are really popular. They're supplements, gummies, drinks. They're naturally present in fermented foods like yogurt, sauerkraut, and I get questions all the time here on YouTube, over on Instagram, and on TikTok. Hey, can you please talk about probiotics? Should we be taking one? Are there any skin benefits? First of all, what the heck are probiotics? Probiotics are live microorganisms that when given in adequate amounts may have some health benefits. While probiotics are present in fermented foods, yogurts, sauerkraut, Kraut, kefir. You also will, of course, find them in supplements. And the microorganisms most commonly used are lactobacilli, bifidobacterium, and enterococcus. There's a lot of enthusiasm for taking probiotics for a variety of digestive health concerns, which exceed the scope of today's video, and I am a no GI expert. Do you know that your gut and your skin, they are intimately connected, and disruptions in the natural microflora, that's the stuff, the live organisms in your gut, uh, disruptions in that can disrupt the permeability barrier there and lead to more inflammatory responses. When it comes to probiotics, probably the area of most active research in terms of skin benefit comes from the literature on eczema, otherwise known as atopic dermatitis. People with atopic dermatitis, they have evidence of disruption of their gut microbiome that may underscore part of how the disease process begins to unfold. People with eczema have less diverse uh, intestinal microflora or bacteria there. Maybe that leads to a more leaky permeability barrier and that may also reflect the skin barrier defect that goes along with having eczema. Eczema, if you're not familiar, it's a chronic inflammatory skin condition that comes and goes, very, very itchy, and it is tightly associated with a variety of other health, thing, health issues. People with eczema have decreased intestinal barrier function and they also have less diverse uh, microflora in their intestine. Infants with allergies or atopic dermatitis, their stool has fewer amounts of lactobacillus and bifidobacterium in comparison to infants that don't. Probiotics may help to modulate certain inflammatory responses starting at the gut. They may help to control and modulate how your immune system reacts to things that it encounters. And for people with inflammatory skin conditions like eczema, that is a part of what is skewed and leads to skin issues, is kind of a distortion of immune responses. Probiotics may also help in reducing the adherence of staphylococcus bacteria to the skin. You may have heard of impetigo or staph, uh, MRSA bacteria. Well, people with eczema are prone to getting colonized with those bad bacteria. And it's thought that perhaps probiotics may help in reducing adherence of that bacteria, helping overall reduce flares of eczema. Probiotics may also help modulate intestinal barrier function as well as skin barrier function. So this is an area where there's a lot of interest, a lot of research interest, and there are studies that demonstrate a benefit preventatively for taking probiotics to prevent eczema. Some dermatologists are keen on recommending uh, probiotics perhaps for preventing eczema, and it started in the last two weeks of pregnancy and continued for the first three months of life. And there are research, uh, you know, there are studies actually showing that that may have a the ability to reduce the incidence of eczema in at-risk risk groups. Unfortunately, these studies are pretty small. They have limitations and they don't look at the long-term ramifications. As far as treating eczema, however, we don't really have good data showing benefit to treating eczema with a probiotic. Now, more research is needed because the studies that we have, they have many limitations. They're small, maybe underpowered, and maybe not having enough diversity. And when you say probiotics, that's actually a pretty big category. There are a lot of different bacteria that could be included in that, dosage, dosage frequency, and different strains. There's actually research to suggest that it's not even just the species of bacteria, it's actually the strain that can alter the type of immune response. And because these studies you know, they're using different strains, it's really hard to draw meaningful conclusions that are generalizable to either treating a specific condition like eczema or to the population as a whole in terms of skin benefit. There's a lot of demand for research on probiotics. It's thought, you know, they're relatively 
readily available either from fermented foods or from supplements. So because of that, you know, there are meta analyses, which kind of look at all of the studies. Unfortunately, the meta analyses are met with so many small unpowered studies that it's difficult really to, to make meaningful conclusions. So it's really difficult to say for sure that probiotics are going to be helpful for a skin condition like eczema. Um, you know, it's also compelling to think about probiotics for people with acne because acne is an inflammatory condition like eczema. Uh, people with acne, they do have uh, actually evidence of a gut dysbiosis, meaning the bacteria that colonize the gut and people with acne may be different and that may relate to flares of the acne, probably because of inflammation. And there's research to suggest that these probiotics, it can help modulate inflammatory responses. So it's compelling to think that it might be beneficial for acne. And let's not ignore the role of stress in our gut microbiome and our skin. And with acne, stress is a well-known trigger for an acne flare. And with stress can impact the gut microbiome, making for more of an inflammatory outcome, encouraging bacterial overgrowth and stagnating intestinal transit time. We already know that people with acne do have a higher association with constipation, like they have they're more likely to deal with constipation. And so there is, you know, it's in, in compelling to think that probiotics may help. Currently, the research that we have on probiotics for acne, small, small studies, again, with many limitations, but they do demonstrate uh, up to 84% improvement in acne with probiotic supplementation, specifically with lactobacillus. Yeah, that's kind of where the research lies as far as probiotics for specific skin conditions. There's some other smaller studies looking at, you know, other skin issues, things like uh, wound healing that, you know, suggest perhaps a benefit, but by and large, we really don't have a lot of good rigorous research on probiotics for treating or preventing any skin condition, eczema being the skin condition where we have the most research, and even there, we're kind of left without answers as to whether or not this is gonna be a good recommendation for people with eczema or unnecessary. But where does that leave you? Maybe you don't have eczema or acne. You're just wondering like, should you take a probiotic for your skin? As it stands now, it's compelling, but again, we just don't have sufficient research to support doing that. Is it harmful? Unlikely. I mean, uh, probiotics, they are thought to be uh, safe for otherwise healthy people. Now, if you go through the literature on probiotics, some of the trials looking at uh, other diseases outside of the skin, there are some risks that pop up and some adverse outcomes that pop up that do beg the question, are probiotics safe for people who may have severe underlying medical conditions? For example, one study looking at probiotics for people who had what's called acute pancreatitis, basically sudden onset of inflammation in the pancreas can be triggered by things like alcohol. Anyways, in that study, there was an increase in overall death in people getting probiotics for acute pancreatitis in comparison to those not getting probiotics. Yeah, the more the, the death in the probiotic group was 16% versus like 6% in the uh, control group. And so for that reason, that study was actually halted prematurely. Infants in the pediatric intensive care unit, and there was a 1.1% rate of bloodstream infections with the probiotic, meaning the probiotic that the infants were given in this trial actually got you know, through the gut into the bloodstream and caused severe infection. These things are pretty rare, but they do occur in these trial, in, in the setting of these trials, and it does give everyone pause to just go recommending them for people who may be like immunocompromised, for example, somebody who doesn't have a good, you know, healthy immune system, maybe because they have cancer or a chronic medical illness. By and large though, probiotics for otherwise healthy people, they are safe. Although these studies 
on you know certain groups with underlying medical issues do you highlight some potential risks that maybe give us pause for just recommending them to people who may be immunocompromised or chronically ill but for otherwise healthy people they do have a pretty long tra long standing track record of safety that being said when it comes to probiotics they are supplements they're not regulated so supplement companies don't necessarily have to demonstrate purity of the ingredients. That is why when you select a supplement, I always recommend se selecting one that is NSF certified. That kind of means that at least what they say on the label is what is actually in the product, especially when we're talking about probiotics, make sure that it actually has the bacteria in there that you think you're getting. So it can be really hard to know for sure what supplement is the best. My recommendation, if you are going to try a probiotic, talk to your healthcare provider first to make sure that it's going to be right for you. Ask them to suggest some. And again, when you're choosing supplements, look for those that are NSF certified uh, because this does kind of help you at least have some level of confidence that what is on the label is what you are actually consuming. But pretty much anything I could tell you about potential benefits to your skin from taking a probiotic would really just be speculation at this point. More research definitely is needed. Hopefully we will get that in the future because it is a really exciting avenue of research. Anyways, guys, let me know in the comments, do you take a probiotic? Have you seen any benefit? Was it recommended to you by your healthcare provider or did you just decide to take it yourself? I would love to hear from you guys what your experience has been. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.